It's a new variation on Tai Chi. Tai Chi. Everybody, we're recording. We're recording. We're recording. Why are we conversing when the tape is being recorded? Because it's on, friends. So you might want to take it outside. Myra, did you bring that cheese? Okay. I was wondering if somebody used it. Day stuff. I'm listening to one down the day, actually. Well, thank you. They're doing it. We can go outside. That's cool. I'm your friend. It's out. Oh, no, we can. And I want to give Barbara and the rest of you people who are into Greek one one word problem. Is that fair, Wendy? Is it fair to give her work? What? Yes. No, All right. no. Yes. All people who want to vote, I should abstain. You have a lobby? Uh, yes, I do. This one might be not so chewy. I like the other one. Okay, well, <laughs> this is the dog chew, remember? The dog that's chewing. See what we're going to do? Yeah. That's all. <laughs> and since we went over it once or twice, it should be a simple yeah. thing to do. Yes. Well, uh, <clears throat> I, go ahead. I think we might want to go over it again. Yeah. Uh, all right, all right, all right, all right. I think Su I'm thinking Sulabde might have come from Su Lambano, but I'm not sure. Su ah. And if so, it would mean taken together, because the Su the, su, the Sigma Upsilon Lambda would actually be Sigma Upsilon Mu or Sum Sum Lambano. But I'm not sure about that. I so I could stand corrected if anybody could correct me. Standing or together. Together, take, yeah, take taken a, together, taken together, or right. in kind short, like, or yeah, or like uh, some colloquial. In some, what do we say? The gist of something like the the core, the um, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Concisely, maybe not concisely so much as um, what? Like you, what, what did you just propose? In some. Now, uh, I have an extra copy of the interlinear translation that Balboa did. So, if I'd like to give it to someone who wants a copy it, of it. It's this thing, right? The published uh, is that, That's interlinear, too. Right. Yeah, okay. I'd like a copy. Did you, yeah, do you have that one? No. Okay. Twenty-five. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Okay. What book is that? What book? Well, uh, the theology book, which is theology. No, she. You know it. Isn't that what this is about? Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it had. It's divided into books inside. One, yeah. Three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, yeah. So she wants to know which of the seven is it. Oh, oh, I see. It's book three and the uh, elements of theology. Oh, in... Uh, pardon me. <laughs> Life of theology. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
Look, at, if we do this together, then read this, while we do this together and do that. Which way? Both. Do, do them simultaneously. I wish we could. Or do it in one direction and then do it in the other direction. Yeah, yeah. Maybe one will pick up the other and vice versa. This is major for Proclus. He's going to say these are triads. Intelligible triads, different kinds of intelligible triads. Boy, am I glad we have Mark here. Phew. He's an expert on the intelligible. Isn't he a, a triad man, so to speak? Yeah, yeah. Good. Well, all your work on the theology is just kind of a playful reference to that. <laughs> So therefore, let's jump in. Okay. So, um, well, let's just read the first one. Parmenides, quick, and uh, I have more of the Thomas Taylor uh, Parmenides available. Uh, wants one. Uh, Ah, he's got some parmenides. Good. Do you have more? I'll take one. And I'll pay for it. They're five dollars, right? Okay, I'll take another one. Sure. So, would you agree we read? Yeah. Good idea. Okay. Good. Okay, but where, where are we starting? Book 2, uh, 141 uh, second hypothesis, which one, is 142b. Bottom of 21. 151. Are you therefore willing that we should return again to the hypothesis from the beginning? and see whether or not by this means anything shall appear to us different from what it did before. I'm entirely willing. Have we not therefore declared if the one is what circumstances <laughs> ought to happen to it is it not so? But consider from the beginning, if the one is, can it be possible that it should be and yet not participate of essence? It cannot. Will not essence therefore be the essence of the one, but not the same with the one. For if it were the same, it would not be the essence of the one, nor unparticipate of essence. But it would be all one to say, the one is, and one one. But now our hypothesis is not if one, what ought to happen, but if the one is, is it not so? Entirely so. Does it not signify that the term is, is something different from the one? Necessarily. If Therefore, any one should summarily assert that the one is, this would be no other than one than that which participates of essence. Certainly. Conclusion. No that. Again, therefore, let us say, if the one is, what will happen? Consider then whether it is not necessary. Okay. That's enough. That's enough. Look here. 
Here's the problem. Is this a, is this a triad or a duad? Are three things being described? If so, it's a triad. Three things. Or, is it just two things? It seems that depends on whether we consider the participation one thing. So we have the one, we have the essence, and then he talks about participation. Well, See, to participate means it's an activity. Right. So the one is, is participating in essence or seal. So it's getting into it. Right. As a result of that, the one is now can be said to be. Now, the question is, is that an additional thing, or is that explaining that the one is? So, that's the question. Is is the same thing as being. No, to be, it means you're, you're, you've yet to be, you've yet to conclude. So the one is, is, is a duet. Mm. I don't see three. Well, what's his conclusion? In the same way we just read. And try any other translation you have just to make sure. Play with it. term is, is something different than the one, or from the one. So that's a duad. It's, one well, see, it's either a triad or it's a duad. Yeah. Which is it? Well, here he says it's a duad. We haven't discussed essence yet. Well, we can use our ancient standard and call on Chris. Okay. Chris, what is it? He's not that ancient. How about Balboa's translation? What does he do? The lobe. What does the lobe do? <clears throat> the lobe says, Shall we then return to our hypothesis? Can we read that Please. section? Yeah. Shall we then return to our hypothesis? and see if a review of our argument discloses any new point of view. By all means. We say then, that if the one exists, we must come to an agreement about the consequences, whatever they may be, do we not? Yes. Now consider the first point. If one is, can it be and not, participate and not partake of being? Sir, it's going into essence. Now, mm -hmm. he means usia in the Greek. Right, usia. Right? So essence, right. Or essence. So okay. we can read essence in there. Then, the, the, the usia of one would be, but it will not be identical with one. For if it were identical with one, it would not be the, the essence of one, nor would one partake of it. Therefore, the they have to be different. Yeah. Keep going. But the statement that one is would be equivalent to the statement that one, one, or one is one. But our hypothesis is not if one is one, or if one, one, what will follow, but if one is. Sounds like three. Do you agree? Certainly. In the belief that one and being differ, 
in meaning 1 and 2b or 1, most assuredly, then if we say concisely 1 is, it is equivalent to saying that 1 partakes of essence. Looks like the whole problem is the word equivalent. Yeah. So what does that mean, equivalent? The Equal same as? Mm -hmm. Equal to. Or in this case, oh, well, that's that's the, the, oh, yeah, so the, uh, Pierre, are we dealing with the issue of same and different here? Isn't he kind of sneaking that in under the rug? Well, at this point, it, if he says, if he says there's something that is equivalent, <clears throat> then there must be something that is equivalent to this. Mm -hmm. But that makes two. Yeah, so one can't be two. Well, That's the first if this, is this different than this, then there are two things being described. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Is it and they're doing something, an activity going on called participating. So that's, the question is? Let's try it. Two or three? Mm -hmm. Now that's all Parmenides does, upon Plato's Parmenides. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the same, the same thing from Proclus's viewpoint. Now, we're going to draw a different, right? We're going to draw another picture. You're just lucky that I'm so good at art. This triad, hey, how does he start? This triad. As a triad. Mm -hmm. This triad, therefore, Parmenides delivers immediately in the beginning of the second hypothesis. Joining to the one, the most simple participation of essence. So look, so there's uh, If the one that is, now this marking in here is essence, or see, that means it's fully participating in the other, isn't it? But look, remember he's starting out with a triad, but he calls it one being and says that being participates of the one and the one of being. So it goes both ways. The one participates of being and being participates of the one. The participation, however, of these is different. For the one indeed so participates of being as illuminating it and filling it and deifying being. Three things. What does it do? Fills, Fills it, illuminates, illuminates it, it, and deifies, deifies it. it. Right. But being so participates of the one as suspended from the one and deified by it. Well, that's another kind of an image. Mm -hmm. Kind of suspended or hooked to it. 
So he's got these two images. One is from one point of view and one from the other, right? Yes. <clears throat> But the habitude, which is the middle of both, well, let's see, if you have two, and does he have this now? Mm -hmm. Yes. Ah. Should have. Should have three circles. Excuse my rather crude figure. See, if you have extremes, then you have a middle. Everything depends upon this language. Hmm. For the, the habitude, which is the middle of both, is not with them void of essence. Therefore, this is essence. For the habitude, which is the middle of both, is not with them void of essence. For neither is the habitude which is among sensibles in no respect being, and much more is this the case with the hab habitude which is there. But this habitude is biformed. Two hunks. Hey, biformed. Mm -hmm. hmm. For it is of the one and is condescent with being, which is, comes into being or comes out or at the same time. A very nice 17th century, 18th century word. Born together or something like that? Parmenides delivers this triad, beginning, beginning what he says about it as follows. So therefore, from the beginning, if one is... Is it possible then for it to be and yet not participate of essence? Ah, it's not possible. But he ends speaking about in the following words. Well, therefore, that which is said to be anything else than this, that the one participates of essence, when it is summarily asserted by anyone that the one is, it will not. This, therefore, is the first intelligible triad. One being and the habitude of both, through which being is the one and the one the being in a matter perfectly admirable. Now he goes on and talks about the father of the intellect and the intellect of the father. Right. Now you have to go back. All right. Are there differences between the text of Parmenides as Plato and Proclus's view? Or minor or, or see on this Definitely. hangs a whole development of Proclus's three kinds of intelligibles and what it means. Because this is where he's anchoring it. One, two, three. Here, where were you reading just now? Pardon me, Julie. Do you know what the Stephanus number is of where you just read? 143. Okay. But it, um, are you in... Globe? That's, I was reading out of Proclus. Oh, commentary? Okay. Do you have it on that? Yeah. Yeah. Comments, yeah. It's, it's just, this is a... a, a Speculation, but you know the word habitude. It's often the word hexis, and that word can also mean possession. Um, now, the reason I bring that up is because um, is because of the role it's playing. Because here it says. Hold it just for a moment. Mm. 
Go ahead. Well, it's like um, the habitude, which is in the middle of the boat, of both. See, if you consider it as a as as possessing both, can we say that? For the moment, the reason I say that is because that line actually that you jumped over. I think, at least I didn't hear it. For it is of it says. <clears throat> Well, for one thing, it says, for it is the motion of the one and its progression into being. That's right. Right. So, it, when, the, when, there is the, when there is the turn of Lucia back upon the one, then at that point where it turns back upon the one, does it become the possession and habitude and then come into being? Or like, is similar, is it different from... The way the intelligence reflects back upon, you know, the intelligence well, reflects back upon the Well, it's also the, it's the activity of Lucia. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Turning it back. Well then, so, so before we've looked at that as the, oh, geez. okay, I, I'm, I'm just wondering here, I guess I'm just wondering, because it looks like parallel to the, the way you often, you've often looked at intelligence and being, right, and, and the motion of Lucia, right? Because when intelligence turns back upon the one, that which produced it, so to speak, it comes into being because it sees it sees its object, which is not the one, but it's the being of its the being of one. Okay. okay. Forget it. I, by the way, I can ignore the way you dropped the your tonality. And say yes. <clears throat> so. <laughs> Well, see, it's funny to call that motion, that second, that, that middle part. Isn't, isn't that what he's saying? That that, it's a... a but um, you have motion if you have... The question is, see, what does it mean to participate? Yes, <coughs> yes. Okay. So is it almost like he's calling the participation that third essence? Yes. Well, okay. First of all, it's the wrong word. Participation. Yeah. Okay. And principle is the wrong word. Because you can't, participation means you're taking a part of something. Right. And that's absurd. Yes. Because that, it's the wrong word. A chunk of it, like yeah, a... I think uh, to to possess something is really meta the uh, metaxis. Take a part of, no. uh, have, have... Not, not a taking sharing. a part of. Sharing? You take a part of something, right, it's, it's not wrong. the same thing not, as right. having a possession of it. Mm -hmm. Apprehensive, grasping Gotcha. So the point you're making about possession and, and hexes is good, mm -hmm. but uh, but we're back to this one issue. Yeah, is it in, is it in Plato? Would you say yes? It's quite obvious that Proclus is really looking at the second hypothesis, and he's got the first introduction, and he agrees with it entirely. No, it's like he's pulling other quotes from other introductions. Because it does say later, you know, one participates of being and being participates of one. But yeah. that's a later answer. You see, this is two, nearly 250 pages into the theology of Plato, where he has this section. It's in the third book, third book towards Prokos. the end of the third book of Prokos. Prokos. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> What he's doing is he's taking the entire, what he calls Platonic metaphysics, and he's putting it in it. This is what he's doing. All of these things comes out of his metaphysics. Hmm. Interesting. And the question would be, uh, Would, let me even ask you in another way. Would you not agree his quotes are very well taken? Proclus' quotes are well taken. They are extremely but do they make the points that he has outlined that are different than Plato's? Would it not be interesting to find in the first introduction a statement where Plato says, by the way, as the one that is, as it participates in essence, it illuminates it, and it fills it, and it deifies it. Mm -hmm. If we found that in Plato, we'd say, well, Proclus is into Plato, and he's using that quote. Yes. But it's not there. 
Now, here's two parts of this. Uh, maybe he's right. Maybe if you get through all the Plato, that's what you have to do. Fill that in. But then he should have said it. Plato should have said it. Yeah. Well, Proclus. It, it seems like it could always be, also be the case that Proclus is saying, well, if Plato is concluding, um, if the one the one is this would be no other than that which participates of essence. No. And he's saying, in order to do that, these conditions have to be present. So he's providing the conditions for this to be. No. So, so, it's not um, that he's necessarily adding; he's accounting for how this could be by providing, <laughs> as you said, the metaphysics. Hmm. Would you say that to provide for the conditions for anything to be, that Yes, he is. He's providing for the conditions for everything that we just said. Mm -hmm. Like, take, take, take this, look here. I say, what is the cause of the, for the illumination of this candle, you'd have to say, well, it has to be the candle, there has to be something to ignite it, there has to be a certain temperature. Those are the material conditions. Now, is that the same thing as saying, <clears throat> well, that's very nice. You also have to have oxygen. Like, is there a difference between trying to describe the cause of this fire and the conditions that allow it to be? Sure. Are they different? Yeah. Are they different? Yeah. Well, can you use the conditions as the part of a cause? Is he mixing up, is, is he taking some of the conditions for the one is mm -hmm. and using them as parts, the necessary parts of what the one is, is? Okay, tell you what, what's nice about this work is we can skip it and go to the <laughs> second one. Mm -hmm. All right. See if something similar happens or something different. Yes. All right. So let's go to Proclus and see whether you can sketch out and create a picture of it or a map of it. This, therefore, is the first intelligible triad, the one being and the habitude of both, through which being is of the one and the one of being in the manner perfectly admirable. The 
first triad, therefore, is called one being. Since power, watch now, power is here occultly. Now he's adding power. <coughs> mm -hmm. right. He's adding power. He said it's there occultly, hidden. Which means the point he just made is not in Plato, in one sense. Well, the triad does not <coughs> proceed from itself but subsists without separation and uniformly being primarily defined according to divine union. Hence, this is the first participation of essence, which participates of the one through the power, through power as the middle, which collects together and separates the one in being. There's his triad. Hey, not only that, but it's super essential, super essential indeed, but conjoined with essence. Okay, so would you agree we're looking for power in the first introduction to define it? He's saying, but it's there, hidden, occult. occult. Yeah. yeah. But it is, is he saying that it isn't? Is it is? It, isn't in the text, if he says occult, is it one way of taking the word occult to say he's saying it's not in the text yet it's there in Plato, or yeah. which is kind of bizarre? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> okay, watch the second one. But he immediately after this, the second triad. Is allotted a progression which Parmenides characterizes by intelligible wholeness, hmm. as we have shown in the Sophisto. For the first triad being uniform and possessing all things intelligibly and occultly, our parks as power and being. So that power, which is the cause of division subsisting between the one and being, is concealed and becomes apparent through the communion of the extremes with each other. Now, here's a shift. The second triad proceeds being characterized by the first intelligible power and having the monads in itself distinguished from each other. For all things being united and without distinction in the first triad, distinction and separation shine forth in this triad. For all things being united without distinction in the first triad, distinction and separa separation shine forth in this triad. Being also and power are more divided from each other. And that which consists of these is no longer one being, or being characterized by the one, but as a whole, so that the one and being in itself as parts. Ah, ah, we finally got something. So that one in being in itself as parts. So we have a whole.
For above indeed, all things are prior to parts and wholeness. <clears throat> but in this triad, there are both parts and a whole, power and the whole consisting of these. Right? But in this triad, there are both parts and a whole, power unfolding itself into light. But in this triad, there are both parts and a whole power unfolding itself into light. He takes the idea of power from what he says is in the first triad, and he's now finding it and pushing it in the second. The second triad, therefore, is called intelligible wholeness. But the parts of it, one in being, I call extremes. Hey, this is important. All right? Notice the language. See, if you're willing to call something extremes, then there has to be a middle. Mm -hmm. And if there's a middle, he's got three things. Hmm. Plus he's got the wholeness. But the parts of it, the one in being, I call the extremes. And power being there in the middle connects one in being. got his triad now, doesn't he? And power being there in the middle connects the one in being and does not cause them to be one in the same manner as the, in the first triad, since also it is the middle of both, through which communion indeed with being, it renders the one, one being. But through its communion with the one, it perfectly causes being to be one. So now he goes back to this other model. Mm -hmm. And thus one being consists of two parts. Now watch this. And the one being consists of two parts. Being which is characterized by the one, and the one which is characterized by being. Look here. This can be characterized as one. This can be characterized as being. Wait a minute, you know what that means? It has two parts, being and the one. Oh, by the way, being is one, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, and one must have being, mustn't it? It just can't float around without anything. Oh, so then these are parts, are they not? Hey, we've got generation of pairs from now on. The multitude that's generated is the plurality is of pairs, a duad, a duad progression. Let's see if that's true. He therefore, to speak uh, uh, Plato, right? <clears throat> um, as Parmenides, Parmenides himself says, he begins therefore to speak about this triad as follow, follows. Again, therefore, let us say if the one is, what will happen? Consider then, if it is not necessary that this hypothesis should signify the one to be a thing of such a kind as have parts. That which is one, therefore, is a whole and has a part. So he ends with that. Hmm. 
Now, there's a whole other paragraph we need. And uh, what the heck, we might as well do it and then go to Plato. Okay. Um, Through these things, therefore, Parmenides defines the second order of intelligibles to be a wholeness. For as existence is, is derived to all things from the first triad, so whole from the second, and all perfect division from the third. This is where we're going. This, however, will be considered by us hereafter. Wholeness, therefore, is triple being either prior to parts, consisting of parts, or subsisting as a part, according to the doctrine of Plato. Okay, look, this is a major theorem. And we have to see whether that's what's going on. Just, just for a moment, okay, look here. What philosophically does this word mean? Three has three meanings. Um, <coughs> now, I do that it's not because I can't draw a picture of God, but I've been urged not to do it to offend some people, so I'll just recall that God. All right? <laughs> and in, in the mind of God, there is this idea. All creation follows from the time is... God then focuses on this idea and that idea then is therefore is the model for all the cosmos. Not universe, cosmos. Universe just means the total number of things. Cosmos means total number of things as well as the principles that, that must be presupposed for things to be at all. Okay, so it's a cosmos. This idea now, this is the model, <clears throat> and it is a whole. But the parts of it are perfect wholes. This idea in the mind of God, uh, called the paradigm model paradigm includes within itself perfect holes like uh, whatever man is what man is as an intelligent creature The model of man as intelligible creature or intelligible creatures themselves is just one idea, which is a whole of which man participates in. And this whole development right, from the idea to its, this is in time, right? Therefore, time unfolds the idea. Therefore, time is a moving image of eternity. Therefore, this idea is a wholeness. It also is a wholeness of perfect wholes. And each one of these perfect wholes has parts. And each of these parts is a perfect part. Whole. The part has to be a whole part, not a half a part. So there are three, right? One, two, three ideas of wholeness. Now, our question is, this is the language he's using. We want to see whether Plato is picking up this language or not. So what I just read reflects this kind of order.
And all the world indeed derives its completion from parts that are wholes. But each of the parts is a whole. Not as the universe is, but partially. Wholeness therefore being triple as we have said according to Plato. Unity and the intelligible and the occult cause of all of these is now delivered. Now he's going to go into more commentary. Um, wholeness, therefore, being triple, as we've said, according to Plato, the unity and the intelligible and the occult cause of these is now delivered, uniquely comprehending and constituting three wholenesses. According to the hyparxis and deed of itself, the wholeness prior to parts, according to the power of the wholeness, which is from parts, and according to the being, the wholeness, which is in a part. Those are the same three I just mentioned. <clears throat> the one is prior to all multitude, but power communicates in certain respect to both extremes, comprehends in itself the peculiarities of them, and being in a certain respect participates of the one. Hence, here we are, the first of the wholenesses, or that which is prior to parts, is derived from the unical hyparxis. It's a monad and is itself constitutive of parts and of the multitude which is in them. But the second wholeness is from power, which it derives from the completion of the parts. So, and the third wholeness, blah, blah. Got it? One, two, three. Now, look here. All we need now is to read that paragraph in Plato's Parmenides and we'll see an exact correspondence with everything we have here on the board only be much easier and simpler. Mm -hmm. Or, not. it's not there. Let's take a look. Plato, read it, thank you. Well, does Proclus get like, um, a little bit off the hook because he has such a synoptic, synoptic vision? Pardon, yeah, because he like when he's reading the the Parmenides, he's got like the Philebus in his mind, you know, and he's got the Sophists in his mind, all these other books, which to him, like, does he when he's writing commentaries, does he separate them, you know, like, or is he just what? allowed to say because I read the Philebus, I sure. read on the bound and the unbound and the mix. that's true. See, you know? that's right. He's pulling it from uh, uh, the Sophist from the Philebus, that's right. Proclus is taking all of that mm -hmm. and he's putting it into a metaphysics and he's taking all of that and he says, I'll show you what's behind this little paragraph. It may not be there then. But well, I don't know, but we'll, this, this one will be there. <laughs> of course. All right, go ahead, Barbara. Go ahead. Let us again say? Yeah. All right. Let us again say what will follow if one is, and consider whether this hypothesis must not necessarily show that one is of such a nature as to have parts. How does that come about? In this way. If being is predicated or said of the one being and unity, well, I don't know whether to read our amended edition or the, the original text. But let's go with the original. Uh, the next one, which is 142D, right from where we left off. Um, in this way, if being is predicated of the one being, of the one which exists, and unity is predicated of being which is one, and being and one are not the same, but belong to the existent one of our hypothesis, must not the existent one be a whole of which the one and being are parts? Inevitably. Well, that establishes one of his points. Yes. Um, and shall we call each of these parts merely a part? Or must it, insofar as it is a part, be called a part of the whole? A part of the whole. 
Whatever one then exists is a whole and has a part. Certainly. Well then, can either of these two parts of existent one, unity and being, abandon the other? Can unity cease to be a part of being, or being to be a part of unity? No. And again, each of the parts possesses unity and being, and the smallest of parts is composed of these two parts. And thus, by the same argument, any part whatsoever has always these two parts. For always, unity has being, and being has unity. And therefore, since it is always becoming two, it can never be one. Certainly. Then it results that the existent one would be infinite in number. Apparently. There's another one of his points, I think, okay. about the motion between the, the two extremes. Cool. There's a motion, there's a process. That it's a duad structure. Look here. Well, it's not just See duad, if you follow this. Right? Motion. Being is a part, and one is a part. But being by itself, it has to be one being. So I'm putting this as it has the being as a property of being one. The one is not a vacuum, it must have some mode of existence, it must be. Well then, look here. Then the, if this whole thing, the whole, has just two parts, being and one. Oh, by the way, would you not agree, we just agreed, that being must have another part, <laughs> it must be said to also have a oneness to it. Agree? Yes. Well then, it now becomes what? One. Or a unity of those two. Oh, and the one that's a part. It's not a vacuum, but it has some mode of existence, therefore it has being. So therefore, what did we get? Another, another <coughs> part with two parts. By the way, would you not agree? The, the being about the, the uh, one has some kind of being that's a part of it. Yeah. Oh, by the way, mustn't being have a part called the one? Yeah. Oh, and the one must not have a part of the being? Mm -hmm. And must, and must, and must, and must, and must, and must. then it's a duatic structure of progression, is it not? If what? It goes on one assumption. If whatever you say being must have to be is a part, then this must be a part too. And if it's a part, it must have a whole. It must have a whole. It must have a part. Oh, uh, what are we doing? Now we generate, again, another pair, do we not? on and on and on. So when he says you, you generate a multitude, would you agree it's a dyadic multitude? Mm -hmm. Twos, 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 twos. Would you not agree, now that we finished it, everything that we were reading before is certainly in there, isn't it? Mm. Chris is going to make that argument, aren't you, Chris? I'll concede a few points. <laughs> it's a triad because he introduces what? Power. 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 Did he introduce power? Did Plato introduce power anywhere? Yeah. Well, unless something can become an infinite multitude without power. Sir, do it Well, somehow there's a becoming of an infinite multitude. Oh. And so, this would be oh. pretty strange to have there be a becoming without a power that's introducing the becoming. See, um, we're a generation. what we're coming to, what we're coming to, is um, is it possible that Plato is doing what Proclus says he's doing? And what you just a moment ago put forward? Mm -hmm. Is the Parmenides, Plato's Parmenides, a skeleton? And you have to fill it in with all the things that he says in other dialogues. And if you do it, do you then get Proclus's commentary? 
I'll vote for that. That's a hell of a lot of work. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Don't you also have to buy that it's an, an occult? That there's a oh, a, oh yeah. a lot of things you got to buy in here. Yeah. 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 Um, Absolutely. Right. That it has. It's like there's an inner there's an inner secret or inner teaching or I don't know, something like that. If occult, it was either intentionally occult or not. If intentionally occult, then there's an inner circle who knows how to unpack it. Because I don't buy that. I mean, yes, it does look like um, that bringing other works together helps you to <coughs> brings you closer to Proclus from this. Okay, but does that mean that that was Plato's intention? That's it. Sure. You know, and shouldn't shouldn't it be somewhere in words? If not in words, then it looks like a secret teaching. You know. And he has a lot of secrets already that one can actually see, right? The Republic's written in a way you have to un you have to unthread it or reveal the threads and look. See, at the see, that's a good point. See, look here. See, let this be the Republic. What we find in the Republic is that any question you have about any part, you should, by careful reasoning, find somewhere where it's clarified. Mm -hmm. right. And therefore, it's self-contained. The assumption that dialogues are self-contained. This jumps away from it, doesn't it? Yes, in a big way. Now, um, you, you know what we need. Uh, now, I'll be busy next week, or I would do it. Uh, why don't we just get uh, uh, Chris to volunteer to do it? Well, I think that's a good idea. Is that fair, Chris? To do what? Oh, I didn't say what. <laughs> <laughs> What would happen if you put Proclus's commentary aside, <coughs> or just put it aside, and do your own commentary, staying exactly what Plato is doing, not adding anything to it from any other dialogue or any other work? What kind of work would emerge from it? Because so far, would you agree, <coughs> Duads, not triads, are functioning here. What did we see in the first introduction to the second hypothesis? Just two ideas. Came down to just... Uh, essence and one. That's all. Mm -hmm. Right. The one participates in essence. Mm -hmm. Here, just two ideas. Now, it may be a third, depending upon how you understand this one word, all right? If you have a triad of anything, should they be, should they be able to be distinguished, if you have three things? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Look here. Is this two or three? This is a whole one. It has two parts, being and one. Is that a triad? Mm -hmm. yeah. Or must a triad be three things? They are three things. Well, his triad... Like here. Maybe These are three things. Whole, <laughs> power, Part. Is that true? Hmm. What about? What? Well, I see. If you were to say that, I know how to talk about it. 
if you have three holes, that's easy to talk about. You're going to say, well, I can talk about a hole having two parts. Therefore, there are three things, the hole and the two parts. Well, then the one that is, the one that is participates in essence. So the whole thing plus the one that participates in essence to other things, therefore it's a triad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is that illegitimate or legitimate? See, what do you what do you want to what do you want to say is a countable thing? <laughs> well Proclus would would he would have to say it's a tetrad then, because he's still going to say there's power that's going to hold the two parts together in a whole. Mm -hmm. So we have four parts. I'll tell you what. I have. I want to get three things. Okay. And uh, agreed. I have three things. One, two, and together, both of them, there's three. The truck. Your Pieces. hand is the, the power thing. in your hand is holding. But you're saying that's still two. No. It's three. Yes. You have two things. We have three things because we got your I hand. I turned to there. Right. It's two. Two. <laughs> Go ahead. You're cleared. Go ahead. Now you can talk. No, I was just saying it's two. No, no, no. Come on. <clears throat> no, I have nothing to say. I got it. If you go to the store and someone says, I want, to get, I want you to get me four things, and if you come back with five, I'm going to hit you on the head. Uh -oh. And so what you do is you bring three things. In the back. In the back. Because together they're four. The whole. Oh, no. Well, it's like going to the store and saying, I'd like some soda, but don't bring the bottle. Just give me some soda. Yeah, pour it in your pocket. You gotta bring it in a bottle. That's an extra item. Yeah, but you see, that's a thing. Is the whole a thing? The whole bottle. No. 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 Soda. So you have two things. You have the container and something you're pouring in it. Yeah. Those are two separate things, aren't they? Yeah. By the way, would the whole of the two parts be something? Bottle of soda. Oh, the whole of the two parts. Look, yeah. this is a trivial question. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, it is rather peculiar. I'm asking whether this is countable in the same way this is and this is. What about Power. Jump in. Okay, I have one for you. Ideal, belief, and power, then it becomes the, uh, the third. Those are three things. Exactly. Would that be four so things since we have, have them together? Of it, then they believe it, then they give it power to be whatever it is. What about when he separates in the third introduction, when he separates other as a third thing? There you go. Let's try right? Because that. That, looks, that looks very, yeah, that looks very good. interesting, right? Because yes. when he says, when he says um, you have, oh, I just lost it. But when he says you have one and... And just in the next section. Why don't, ahead, just, why don't we just roll in the next section? Because yeah. Where it says I have being in one, and when I speak of being, you know, uh, each of them, have we not spoken of each of them? And do I not speak of both? And also when I speak of being in other, other in one, in every, in every case I speak of each pair as both. Right? So yeah, that's actually the conclusion to that. But right, it's right in the next, in the next introduction. So they differ from each other by virtue of being other and different. Therefore, right. the other is neither the same as one nor as being. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that to me is the third. Look, would you agree this is a triad? <laughs> That is, they should be different. Mm -hmm. 
Well, this is a triad. Because together, they make a whole. And therefore, isn't the third part whole? What's the togetherness? <laughs> this whole uh, accountable thing, that's all. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just wondered. What do you think? I think if I went to the store and I bought a can of coffee and a, a jug of milk, I would pay for each and the, the shopkeeper says, no, you have to pay for the third because they're together. <laughs> yeah, and I right. Pay. That's what I do. I charge <laughs> an extra buck. <laughs> You're taking them together, give me another buck. <clears throat> Wouldn't that fit? Well, what about if you take, when you buy a cup of coffee, let's say you have to pay for the milk that you put in it. So you put the milk in the coffee, now you have milky, milky coffee, and they say, now you have to pay more because you have a hole. That's right. Before you didn't. Yeah, before you didn't. Yeah. Because yeah. you, you have to have more than one part to have a hole. So if you have two, you have three. And you only pay for two. <coughs> okay, look here. <coughs> if you're finding this a little fun and puzzling, I'm undermining the idea that these are, this is a triad. Yes. Can whole be a, 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 a numerable thing? The way part is whole, is it? Wait a minute. If you have a whole, I know, I got a whole. Ask me about it. Uh, what, is, what is the whole? Uh, well, I just happen to have one part. <clears throat> one part? No. Yeah. You can't have one part in a... Maybe. Why not? <laughs> well, do you have the whole part? A whole is that... Yes, part? I do have a whole part. Therefore, I have... Uh, a part. Uh, one part's a whole, right? Mm. Or do I have to have parts to have a whole? You have to have parts. parts. Has to be plural? Yes. yes. Then this is wrong. Hmm. It's not a whole part. Yeah, but if you have a whole part... No, you can't have a whole. Well, if that whole part is part of a whole, but yeah, you can have a whole part, but then you have to have parts of the part that make it a whole part. <laughs> well, look here. Everybody agrees this makes sense, right? Okay, I just want to go on from here. Yeah, we're the first part, the first time you said it, or the second time? But he's talking about whole mess. Well, that, well, that's a fourth part. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing. Yeah. yeah, that's another. See, if you have two things and they're parts, then you have all of it as a whole. These are the two parts. <clears throat> and these two parts are a whole. It also, there's a wholeness to them, so that's four. Right. And they have a unity, so that's five. And of two? course, they have partness because. <laughs> <laughs> well, they have partness, right? <laughs> oh boy. Hey. Uh, <coughs> well, uh, I did my best tonight to help you with showing the relationship it. between Proclus and Plato. And, yeah, your point? Well, he broke it down to say that each of these parts, one in being, would it be a part alone or a part of the whole? And so that's where he comes in with the fact that it possesses a part, because he's saying that these two together become a part of the whole. The two together being a whole and a part? No, the whole is consisting both of each of these two parts. Oh, that's two parts. Oh, then you can have a whole. But they have to come together. And well, if they come together... Therefore, it's a part. Then you have three parts, because you have the two coming together, that's the third. Right. That's what he's saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Unless I'm missing part. it. We call each of these parts a part alone, or part of a whole. Well, please make a point. Go ahead. Therefore, well, <coughs> each of these parts... Conclude, are, yes. Well, he's saying that you, you don't call... Uh, each should be called a part of the whole. So that's three parts. One. Each means a part. A part. Fine. Well, how will that help us with our puzzle? 
How would you how would you add to it or clarify it? No one can hear you, I think. I said he shifts in the next sentence, which I don't understand. Well, <laughs> if that's what you need to make sense of it, mm, and you don't understand it, give it to Mark. He's shifty guy. Well, he has whole to a part and is one. Mm. Okay, so I'm going to quit here, okay? Mm. Yeah. Um, what do you want to do next with? Mm. Third half opposite. We'll look at the whole thing and then move on. Agree? Okay. That means take another look at Proclus, see what he's doing. All right. You can do the third. Third is relatively easy. <laughs> and you can see the differences clearly. But see, it raises the question is Proclus right? Or. Is, right is it thing? possible to develop a metaphysics entirely out of what Plato is doing in the Parmenides? So is Proclus and, and different right in that respect and developing his own? And that would be a different kind of Plato's theology. Right. No. Okay. Neoplatonic philosophy. Neoplatonic philosophy. Neoplatonic philosophy. I mean, if, if he in fact is changing it, and if it's different. Neo, neo, Platonic. Yeah. Neo. Mino. No, Nino. 